Hello, in this video we're going to be taking a look at binomial expansions of the form 1 plus x all to the power of n where we have n as a real number. So in the previous video I made on this we looked at what to do when n was a natural number which is a positive whole number. So in this one we're going to extend that idea so if n was a fraction, a negative number or a decimal or something like that so now we'll be able to expand things like that too. So I've written the formula for this in this red box here, and that's the first thing we're going to look at. But first, I'll just let you know that I'll timestamp each different part of the video. So if you're not interested in the explanation as to why this works, or for example, why this value of x has to be less than 1, then you can just skip ahead to an example that will demonstrate how to use it, and you can probably save a bit of time. So the first thing we'll look at is the formula, which does look a bit tricky, but it's actually really easy. Okay, And when I demonstrate the examples, you'll see that. And so we have that 1 plus x all to the power of n is equal to this sum here. Now the first thing to note is that if we have a value of n that isn't a positive whole number, so it's not a natural number, this sum will go on forever. So it will never, what we say, terminate, it will never end. Okay, so the powers of x will just get bigger and bigger each time and it will just go on as an infinite sum. So we have 1 plus, well, n times x, and so on, right? And so the pattern is, just in case you were interested, starts off with x to the power of zero here. Then we get x to the power of one, x to the power of two, x to the power of three, and each term the power of x is increasing by one. Then we're dividing everything by zero factorial here, one factorial, two factorial, three factorial, and so on. And then we're starting off with n, n multiplied by n minus one, n, n minus one multiplied by n minus two, and so on, okay? And this is coming from the n choose r notation that we looked at in my first video. So before I demonstrate it, we'll look at why the absolute value of x has to be less than one for this formula to work, okay? And so these lines here, we call that the absolute value or the modulus of x. And all that means is it just turns whatever value of x we have into a positive. So the modulus value of two or absolute value of two is two, but also the absolute value of negative two is two. So it just turns into a positive, okay? And so the reason it has to be strictly less than 1 is because, okay, we want it to converge on the answer. So if we were to, for this example, ignore all of these ends, okay, let's just ignore them for a second and look what happens to this sum if we have x greater than 1. So let's say we have it equal to 2, for example, okay. So in this example, we're going to look at what happens if we've got x equal to 2. Well, in the sum, we would have 1 plus 2 plus here we've got two squared, so four. Then we're gonna have two cubed, which is eight, okay? And we'll go on like for a little bit more, so whatever, okay? Now, if we were to keep going infinitely, okay? So we've got one plus two plus four plus eight plus 16 plus 32 plus 64. Each time the value that we get out is gonna be greater and greater. And so when we sum it up, the number is just gonna get bigger and bigger and it's gonna sum to infinity, okay? So unless whatever is in here, the other side there is equal to infinity, this won't make sense, okay? Because we're gonna have one side of our equation which is equal to infinity or you know, will be sum to infinity and the other side that's equal to a value. So it won't give us an answer that we're interested in. However, right, if we make the absolute value of x less than one, well, say for example, 0 0.5, let's see what's gonna happen. So we would have one plus 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 squared, which is equal to 0 0.25, plus 0 0.5 cubed, which is 0 0.125, plus 0 0.5 to the power of four, so let's see, or 0.5, sorry, to the power of four, which would be 0 0.0625, okay? And so in each subsequent term, because every time we square or multiply 0 0.5 by 0 0.5 at halves, the value of x is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until we're practically adding on zero and this will cause it to converge on an amount and that amount is going to be equal to the left hand side. Okay, so that's why we have to have the absolute value of x less than one. Hopefully that made sense, okay? So let's take a look at an example that will make this seem pretty easy because it is. So we need to find the binomial expansion of one over one plus x to the power of four up to and including the x cubed term. Okay, and I've written the formula for the binomial expansion below because you are given that in the exam. And so the first thing is I'm gonna rewrite one over one plus x to the power of four, and I'm gonna write it so it looks like this, one plus x to the power of negative four, because it's the same thing, but it's in a nicer form. It looks more like what we want it to look like. So in this example, our value of n is negative four. So let's write that in like that. 
And now it's just a case of using this formula to find out an approximate value of this up to the x cubed term. So we have one plus x to the power of negative four is equal to, I'm just using the formula, one plus n multiplied by x, so negative four multiplied by x plus, well, n multiplied by n minus one, so negative four minus one is negative five, divided by two factorial, well, two times one is two, multiplied by x squared, and finally, plus n, so negative four multiplied by n minus one, which is negative five, multiplied by n minus two, which is negative six, all divided by three factorial, three times two times one is six, and that's multiplied by x cubed. And I'm gonna write plus dot dot dot, because as I said, this is an infinite sum. So let's now simplify this, and we've got one, well, negative four multiplied by x is negative four x, and then the next term we've got negative four multiplied by negative five, well, that's positive 20. Positive 20 divided by two is 10, so plus 10 x squared. And in the third term, we've got negative four multiplied by negative five is positive 20. Positive 20 multiplied by negative six is negative 120. And if we divide that by six, we get an answer of negative 20. And that's x cubed plus dot, dot, dot. But in the question, we only want it up to the x cubed term. So I'm just gonna write my answer as so. I'm gonna say it's one plus x to the power of negative four is approximately equal to one minus four x plus 10 x squared minus 20 x cubed. And I'm gonna leave it like that for now. Okay, let's look at this final example, which is a bit trickier. So we need to find the binomial expansion of the square root of four plus two x up to and including the x squared term. Now, if we take a look at this, okay, it is not of the form one plus x to the power of n, which we want it to be. And so we're gonna to have to do some rearranging before we can use our formula. So the first step is, I'm just gonna rewrite it so it looks a bit different. So four plus two x to the power of one half, okay? This is still the same thing, yeah? I've just written the square root as to the power of a half. Now, I want it to read one plus something x, okay? And so to do that, I'm gonna actually factor out the four from the first two terms, okay? So if I do that, it's pretty easy. We say four multiplied by what it takes me to four? Well, one, four times one is four. And then what do I have to multiply four by to get me to two x? And that's just plus one half x, okay? And if you're not sure, how that works, you can just expand that and check that it gives you the same thing. So that's all to the power of one half. Now I can distribute the power across those two things. So we've got four to the power of a half multiplied by one plus one half x to the power of a half. Now four to the power of a half is the same as the square root of four. And so we've got this is equal to two multiplied by one plus one half x to the power of a half. And so now you can see this one plus one half x to the power of a half looks a lot nicer and more like what we need it to be for us to use the binomial expansion. So now I'm just gonna expand that up to the term x squared. So we've got one plus one half x to the power of a half is equal to, well, using my formula, we've got one plus n multiplied by x. So n multiplied by one half x. Okay, we take the coefficient into account when we do this, plus, n multiplied by n minus one, so negative a half, divided by two factorial, well two times one is two, multiplied by one half x all squared, plus dot dot dot. So now we can simplify this and we get one plus, well one half multiplied by half x is just a fourth x like this, plus, let's have a look, we've got one half multiplied by negative a half, that's negative a fourth, Divided by two, that goes to negative one eighth. So we could just write that below here like this. So this is negative one over eight. And then the, on the other side, we've got one half x squared. Well, that just goes to one fourth x squared. And multiplying those two things together, we get to negative one eighth multiplied by a fourth x squared. Well, that's just gonna be uh, negative one over 32 x squared, plus what other terms would be in that expansion. So from here, we're only interested in up to the x squared term. So we can say that one plus one half x to the power of a half is approximately equal to one plus one fourth x minus one over 32 x squared. But if we take a look, the original was actually two lots of this, okay? Two times that. And so now all I'm gonna do is multiply both sides by two. So we can say two lots of one plus one half x 
to the power of a half is approximately equal to 2 plus 1 half x minus 1 over 16 x squared. And that is approximately equal to the thing we were interested in at the start, which was the square root of 4 plus 2x. Okay. So hopefully this video was useful. If it was, like, subscribe and share. And go over to my channel for tons more maths tutorials. And thanks for